Hello everyone, and welcome to the Nimiton. My name is River, and today I think we should discuss something that's a little more abnormal for this channel. To start, we are in some strange and interesting times. So I thought it would be worthwhile to discuss the concepts of preparation in terms of magical philosophy. To do this, of course, we need to cover the basics, to some extent. In short, that which classifies as magic is when there is both a cause and effect, or we might say a X input and Y outcome, both of which are reasonably considered disconnected. To the mystical individual, the connection can be more clear, but at face value, they should not hold any immediate relevance to each other. However, when we look at the most popular operations, and you may be wondering what is the most popular operation, one of the most classic and used today is something like the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Therefore, we have a genre that is, we might say, the most popular, and that is going to be warding. Now, the thing is, we might ask, why is preparation so valuable in the sphere of occultism, particularly when it comes to ritualistic practice? That is because it is far greater to be proactive against a situation than it is to be reactive. Now, I know most people might think that magic as a philosophy is all reactive, and that if we desire X, we are reacting to a lack of it, therefore we are going for it, uh, so we are being react. In a sense, that's true. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that the greater scheme is in a more, we might say, delicate or dangerous situation. So, to help express the value of preparation, we first need to use a little bit of a metaphor. When you're getting ready for something, let's say general Western ceremonial magical practices, there are implements even the less than valuable practices uh, that are grimoire in nature, such as the Goetia, have preparatory activities, things to get a means of setting up uh, some of the grimoires that we might see, such as Arbitel, have very long processes to be ready to even engage in the first step. So we must understand that preparation is key when it comes to successful outcomes, at least from this ritualistic perspective. And you might wonder, well, why is preparation so valuable? And what is a means by which we might understand preparation better? Well, it is rather easy to express this or explain this. We're going to use a simple metaphor, which is the poor man, rich man metaphor. Let's say there is a pleasing object that fits very specific specifications for a particular practice. The wealthy man or rich man might quite easily go buy it. And because of that, there's little actual investment into the process of obtaining that item. We could say in a sense that it is lacking preparatory charge. The poor man who has to labor more earnestly for this item, at least with it on his mind as it is, and taking a greater hit for this object in the basic human sense of what it means to take a hit financially is going to have a greater level of mental or even emotional empowerment in that implement and this is a space in which we might say someone is prepared to engage in workings at least that particular implement is ready to be used or charged to a greater extent so the thing is you might be wondering now, well, okay, I get this from a ritualistic, magical perspective, but how does this apply to me in my daily life? Well, most of us are currently in a reactive state. What I'm getting at is that with the current scenario that we're experiencing uh, in our daily lives, most of us are having to respond to an event rather than be prepared for it. So I think it's best that we discuss the better means of approaching a reactive situation, both from a magical perspective and a normal one. Now, in a very non-striking way, we can say that the best approach whenever we're already behind the curb is level-headedness, which deals with the concepts of balance found in both hermetic philosophy, it is found in Kabbalistic states, it is just a general means of uh, being in a calm 
and contemplative mental state because panic is the weapon of reactive natures in the sense that it is uh, a downfall. It's not good to be in a panic state. So when we can level ourselves and be in a more readied sense, we can then tackle a reactive situation from a semi-proactive one because we're no longer in a kind of backdrawn defensive position. We're turning it into an offensive position. And by that same means, we can understand in a magical scenario, if we were in a reactive state, we would have to respond to it level-headedly and proactively. Uh, one such thing is coming back to the example we used earlier, which was the LVRP, or Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Now, when we understand conceptual warding, we kind of have to know preemptively that it is a closing as well. Most people who utilize this Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn popularized practice uh, use it before you practice and at the close. The thing is, if you miss it in the beginning, the end doesn't guarantee everything, but it can clean up the output, so to say. The spiritual implications of this are something that I really don't care to get into because everyone has different opinions of this. However, it's better to clean the exit than to <laughs> uh, go through with no warding at all, so to say. One means we might understand this Kabbalistically is a complicated view of repentance. Repentance is done reactively. However, it is still a proactive approach in the sense that it is a uh, giving up of things that have been, we might say, negatively placed because of our lack of proactive nature or preparatory nature, not just in ritualistic things, but in everyday things. Things that are ritualistic, but most people wouldn't consider ritualistic. Which brings me to a final point. Magic and life are reasonably supposed to be one and the same at their base. But in these moments, I think the greatest thing that can be done is to remember that magic was always more of a supernally proactive practice. So in closure, I would like to note that it isn't that magical operations are no answer for anyone, but in a time like this, we need to be reasonable to the best of our ability and acknowledge human limitation. And if there's nothing immediately in front of us, then we must react appropriately, level-headedly, and hope that we can again get into a more offensive, proactive state of being and hopefully prepare for a brighter tomorrow. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this very basic discussion on magical philosophy and as it relates to ritualistic practices. This has been River at the Nimiton, and I'll see you next time.